Praise the Lord. This is your friend Michael Masang once again. And we are continuing with our series on overcoming anxiety and depression. Before I read the scripture, I want to thank those of you from all over the world that have sent me so many messages and compliments and thank you notes for the series that we are running on overcoming anxiety and depression. I'm looking at it as that I'm not teaching this thing because I wanted to teach it, but it's because God understands the need of his people. There is such a huge need in the body of Jesus Christ, in families, in governments, in society, for people to understand that we are not supposed to be living our lives in anxiety, depression, stress, and fear. We were not created for these things. We were created to be overcomers. We were not created to be victims of these things. So today, I want us to look at the book of Psalms, and we are going to look at chapter 34 and verse 17 and verse 18 in the King James Version of the English Bible. And this is what the scripture says. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. The psalmist David is saying like this, The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth. So as a righteous child of God, your duty is to cry to God. And how do we cry to God? We cry to God by presenting our need to God and inviting him in our situation. And by carrying our burden and laying it upon him because he says, cast all your burdens unto Jesus. Because he cares for you. It, and he says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Sometimes I've, I've sat down and, said, and, and thought like this. How come that you and I, or human beings, when doctors give us instructions... This is how, if you want to mitigate this problem, if you want to manage this problem of your diabetic, if you want to manage your arthritis, if you want to manage your gout, or if you want to man manage your, your, your um, whether anxiety disorder, whatever thing, the doctor gives you a prescription. And many of us will always follow what the doctor said and will always tell people the doctor said. And we do it. And we have results. But God is giving us his way. Remember the scripture that we read, number one, was Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 and 7, which says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, in everything, through number one, prayer. Number two, petition. Number three, thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding shall guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So what is the prescription of the Holy Spirit to mitigate the problem of anxiety, depression, fear, and stress? He says, pray. He says, petition God. He says, thank God. And as I, I, I said in the, in the second class in this series, thanksgiving is just like worship. 
It is the most defiant attitude against the devil. People who worship and people who thank God, even in the midst of adversity, when the storms of life are coming in, beating against you from left and right, and you choose not to sit down pity party, but rather worshiping God because He cares and He knows the end before the beginning. Nothing has happened in your life as an accident. Everything that is happening in your life, God knows it. And he knows that you are an overcomer. And that's why he tells us in Corinthians that there is no temptation that, that has overcome us that is beyond, uh, that has come our way that is beyond our, our power and our ability to overcome it. And that in every temptation, God opens a way for us out of the problem. So God has already assured us. It's like you go to the hospital and the doctor says, you do this and you do this, your problem will be cleared. Your problem will be cleared. And we take our doctors so seriously. If we, 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 we go to the bank and the bank tells you your account is remaining with 40,000 Kenya shillings, we don't doubt the bank accountant or the bank, the bank manager or the teller in the bank. But something that is so disturbing is that we do not trust God the way we trust experts. But God is sovereign. And his word is sovereign. Now in Psalm 37 and verse 17, he says, The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth. So what is the assurance? This assurance again takes me to the book of First John. Chapter 5 and verse 14 and 15. What does it say? This is the confidence that we have. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So what does that mean? We have confidence that God will always hear our prayer. This is the confidence that we have. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, what we ask for, then we already have it. And if we know that we already have it, what are we supposed to do? Let us lift up our hands and thank God. Call those things that are not as though they are. Thank God for your healing when even the headache is still there. Thank God for your healing even when the cast is on your hand. We thank God for healing and when you are still walking on it with a limp. Thank God for healing, for he has already healed you when your belly is still aching. Thank God for healing when your nerves are still messing you up. Thank God for healing even when your back is still um, uh, aching. As you continue thanking God, you activate the miraculous in your life. The righteous cry and the Lord heareth. Who are the righteous? The Bible says, God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That is 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21. And Genesis 16, 6, Abraham believed in God and it was granted unto him for righteousness. So faith makes you righteous. If you have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are the righteous of God and that's when you cry out, the Lord hears. This is already established. God will always hear the cry of the righteous and you are the righteous because you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he will not just hear their cry, he will deliver them, listen, from all their troubles. I want you to list the things that are troubling you as I teach this thing. Please list all those things that are troubling you. Guess what? God is going to deliver you from all those things that are troubling you. He is going to deliver you from everything. He is going to deliver you from all the debts. He is going to deliver you from all the sickness, from the, from the cases in court that are against you. He is going to deliver you not because, sometimes, not because you are innocent. Sometimes you are, you are actually guilty, but on the account of your faith in him, he is going to do it to vindicate the holiness of his name. That is who our God is. He says he will deliver you, not from some of your troubles, but he will deliver you from all your troubles. 
The Lord is near those who are of a broken heart. When you have a broken heart and you have a contrite spirit, God will never reject you. A contrite, broken spirit does not rely on your own strength. When you tell God, I surrender this situation to you. I can't move on without you. That is humility. That is having a contrite spirit. And the Bible says, God is near you and God will save you. So tonight or this morning, I just want each one of you to know that your salvation, your redemption is right here with you. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord, I thank you because of the gift of righteousness that we have in Christ Jesus. And because of this righteousness, when we cry, you hear us. And when you hear us, Lord, you deliver us from all our troubles. I thank you that God, the cry of this brother, who has listened to this broadcast and is just going down on his knees, or this woman, she's going down on her knees and she's lifting up her hands before you, surrendering to you, God. Father, hear her cry. Father, deliver her from all her troubles and his troubles, Lord, and may you be near her. Let, let her, let my brother, let my sister feel the empress and the touch of God. God, a broken spirit, a broken heart, and a contrite spirit, you will not reject. I just pray that God, you bless this, your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To continue enjoying this spiritual nourishment, click on subscribe button below. Click on the notification bell to become the first to know when we upload another video. Thank you and see you in our next broadcast.